against the US and all the problems we just went through in terms of the long run issues, that probably is going to be about the balance of where it goes. The biggest issue though, <laughs> what everyone you know, comes back to is look at how badly it damaged you know, the manufacturing sector and, and businesses over the last decade. The issue there wasn't necessarily that the Canadian dollar went to parity, but it was how quickly it got there. Uh, businesses just couldn't adjust to how quickly the costs were changing, how quickly the demand uh, was going through in the time. So you're starting to see that go through. Certainly, you know, the, the days of sort of a 67 cent Canadian dollar are over, and so businesses are starting to have to compete by being the most productive manufacturers as opposed to just the cheapest cost producers. That comes through into this machinery and equipment investment that we're starting to see come in. So you are seeing that come through, and it does look like we'll hit that, uh, get very close at least, uh, to hitting parity in there sometime. Then you probably start to see it tip back down as sort of the US recovery does take a bit more hold. As that parity point, you know, this early on does kind of feed back through into Canadian demand and help them rebalance a little over time. You probably see a pullback in the Canadian economy at that point too. Um, and also by the fact that you're not seeing a massive rebound in commodity prices. So that's not going to really help support the Canadian dollar at this point. Um, that's going to take a bit slower to come, although we are seeing a pretty fast rebound uh, in a number of emerging markets. Um, you know, the Canadian economy tends to grow at about 2.5% on an annual basis. We saw a rebound in uh, Singapore, Taiwan, Korea, with about 25% annualized growth in the second quarter. And it looks like they're going to sustain something just a bit below that in uh, the next quarter. China went through this entire recession and never contracted. So uh, the emerging markets, where there weren't any financial issues, did see a very large recession, but they're also seeing big rebounds as things start to return. So there will be some strength getting into commodity prices, but uh, as you can see, we're not really seeing anything yet suggesting you're going to get the big spikes in commodity prices that we did earlier. When you look at the domestic side of the Canadian economy, when you look through some of the sectors, uh, you look at the housing market, uh, you saw you know, some concern, and concern by us as well, sort of the end of last year and the beginning of this year when you looked at some of the areas, uh, you know, that Canada would see a bit of a downturn in the housing market. And it definitely did on a national basis and even on a regional basis. But what you saw was something that was driven by fundamentals, which was very different from the United States. What you saw throughout Canada is those areas that had the biggest run-ups in prices, where the economy turned the largest and had some of the biggest contractions, those were the housing markets that saw the weakest uh, performance over the last year. So you're going out west. It, it used to be a story of the west versus the rest in terms of where all the growth was coming from. Now it was the west versus the rest in terms of where the biggest contractions in the housing markets were coming. You know, the Vancouver market, the Edmonton, the Calgary markets it did see very sizable contractions in the housing markets, but simply because demand for commodities sort of vanished over the course of a month or two. Um, and so you had a lot of that construction in the pipeline. You had what turned out to be a lot of oversupply in the housing market, and it took time for that to work off. Uh, you've seen home prices come out, but for example, when you look in the Guelph and the Kitchener area, uh, year over year home price growth basically slowed from about 5% year over year to about zero. Uh, so you know, certainly it's not wonderful that you know, home prices didn't really grow over the last year, uh, but it's much better than what you saw throughout the rest of the country. The same thing happened in Toronto. You saw the home prices slow down, never actually uh, quite get into the contraction territory, but uh, you know there wasn't a fundamental reason for that to happen either. So the economy did slow, and that meant that the housing market was a bit weaker because you did have manufacturing issues going on, uh, but there wasn't a massive need to rebalance. And so that's what we've seen as you look around the, uh, uh, the basis. It was driven by the fundamentals, and you couldn't say that about the US, because in the US it was driven by the crazy things people did with mortgages over the last five years. When you look at that turn in the housing market, uh, you know, we saw all the markets across uh, kind of getting down in that buyer's territory. We're actually starting to see some areas peak back into seller's territory. You're actually already back to a point uh, where there seems to be a bit more buyers than there are sellers. And a lot of that is driven by the fact that uh, the Bank of Canada and uh, the Ministry of Finance put a lot of stimulus into the economy to help adjust for this external shock that was coming. But domestically, there still wasn't that need for quite as much of the stimulus that was going in there. So there was a bit of an imbalance, and they had to do what they did. But what you're seeing is the domestic side of the economy is helping to drive the Canadian economy. And zero interest rates, or near zero interest rates, obviously brings some home buyers out there. So you are starting to see that come through, and you're starting to see some of the markets pick up. So that is helping to contribute to growth. Uh, the downside factor in the area that you know, we're still kind of looking for that turning point is in the, uh, the unemployment market or the employment market. What we're seeing are job losses uh, actually coming in a bit less than what we saw in the last two recessions in Canada. Um, so while in the United States, the entire story was the worst since the Great Depression. I guess I lied, that was my last time to mention. 
Um, in Canada, you know, it, certainly it was a recession and it was something that we haven't seen in 20 years, uh, but it didn't get nearly to the uh, sort of stature of that area. So we're seeing job losses at this point that are still falling short. Looking at some of the trends, looking at some of the leading indicators that we're getting from businesses, you probably see the employment losses in Canada stop somewhere in the fourth quarter of this year, first quarter of next year. So we're not there yet. You know, we're still seeing some of that runoff, but it looks like we're getting near the end of that. Um, we already had job growth last month. Uh, I don't think we're going to see it sort of sustained in terms of job growth in the U.S., but we're at least in that area where you know, the margin of error says that some months we're going to see growth and some months we're going to see contraction. So we are getting to a much better area. The concern as we sort of get into the financial area in Canada and implications for the long run, just as we did with the US, the implications for the long run are that there's still a lot of spare capacity that's been opened up. Um, certainly, sort of, you know, on the area of Ontario here, when you're looking at the massive hits that came to the auto sector and the manufacturing sector, there's a lot of capacity that just isn't being used right now um, because the level of demand now is nowhere near where it was. And it's going to take time to retrain workers. It's going to take time to retool factories. Uh, some of them will move from autos to other industries. Some of them you know, will, will start to change. Some of them will probably close permanently. But it's simply going to take time to go through that process. In the meanwhile, that leaves a lot of just spare capacity sitting in the economy. And the issue with that spare capacity, whether it's unemployment rates that you know, we haven't been at in 15 or so years, uh, whether it's a lot of machinery and equipment and businesses sitting there with spare capacity, that's not an environment where you tend to get inflation. Because you have workers, a lot more workers than there are jobs, so you're not gonna have a lot of pressure on upward wages in terms of that environment. You have a lot of businesses that have a lot more capacity than there is necessarily demand at this point for the products, so that's not an area where manufacturers and businesses are gonna feel comfortable raising prices. So it's very hard in this situation to envisage, envisage a scenario where you really get inflation. So that's one area where we don't think there's a lot of concern right now. We're not seeing pressures on the inflation. Uh, we've seen deflation on a year-over-year -year basis on the headline measure when you look at all prices in the economy. That's probably starting to turn around. A lot of that just had to do with the, the collapse in oil prices last year. Uh, when you look at core inflation that strips out the energy and the food prices that tend to be extremely volatile and, and does a much better job in terms of showing us a trend of where inflation actually is, that's continuing to drift down, and it tends to continue to drift down as long as that big output gap is there in the economy. Uh, so really the message from that is that the trend in inflation has not even yet begun to sort of slow down. And so we think you're going to see that core inflation measure dip down below 1% um, and probably just slowly start to pick up as next year. Uh, the good point of that is that it means the Bank of Canada doesn't really need to raise interest rates anytime soon. Um, so their message has been a sort of a pre-commitment that Based on that inflation forecast and you know, assuming no real shocks, they're not planning to raise interest rates until at least the end of the second quarter of next year. Um, and we actually think it's probably going to be the fourth quarter before they actually get to a point where they think they need to be raising interest rates. Uh, so you're, we really think you know, you're looking at another 12 months of interest rates sitting where they are. Um, obviously, retail rates will start to move up a little bit as those expectations start to work in. Uh, but the Bank of Canada rate that serves as the base for uh, interest rates through there looks like it's going to be remaining uh, very close to uh, where it is uh, for at least another year. In the U.S., we think it's even longer. In the U.S., we think it's going to be 2011 uh, before you actually see the Federal Reserve start to raise interest rates in the U.S. Uh, there just isn't an inflation pressure. Uh, and as long as there's no inflation, they're not going to be in any hurry to start raising interest rates because they do want to fill that gap. They do want to try and make up as much of that as possible. And I mentioned we're not getting as strong of a rebound as we should. It's still the strongest rebound that we've had in 25 years after a recession. You have to go back to the 1980s recessions in the U.S. and in Canada to see a rebound as strong as it is now. The issue, obviously, is that the downturn in terms of the economy was a bit worse, and you would have expected a bit more growth coming in. Uh, so these central banks are not going to be in any hurry to move forward with interest rate hikes. They're going to try and let the economy grow for as long as it can, make up as much of that capacity, and I think that's where we're kind of going to be sitting a while. So, you know, when you're looking at bond yields and looking at where things are going to go, we're probably near the bottom at this point. We've seen the worst of what's in there. We've seen a lot of the fear starting to unwind out of the, uh, the bond yields in terms of uh, worries about how much worse it's going to get. Uh, but it's going to just increase very, very slowly at this point as we're moving forward. Interest rates uh, really are probably going to be fairly low for fairly long to try and let this uh, pick back up.